Hello my friends, William Poloniak here at Whole Health Foundation. Today I'm going to make another garden harvest juice with collards and celery and gobo root. My wife calls this elephant tail root. Let's look at the rest of my ingredients. In addition to my gobo root, my celery and my collards, I have four sweet Anaheim peppers, a couple of small beets, a whole head of garlic, about 80 grams of ginger and 150 grams of turmeric, my favorite green French sorrel, and of course carrots. So let's start making juice. Now the first thing I'm going to do is install my near zero blowback cutter. It has over 80 teeth cut into the five blades. And then I'm going to plug in my thermometer and begin. We'll plug in the thermometer and the first thing I'm going to do is feed in three or four ice cubes to cool down the cutter and the feed cube. Now the first thing I'll do is feed in my celery. Celery is very, very fibrous, so we have to feed it in slowly. You may or may not have seen the ice spit out. It'll never go to your ceiling. The ice came out about six inches onto my apron. Now next I'll start with my collars, two or three leaves at a time. And what I'll do is fold this in half and roll it into a tube to make it easier to feed in, and I'm going to feed in the stem end in first. Next I'll put in my ginger. A whole head of garlic. And then I'm going to put in a little turmeric. So now I'm going to put in the beets, tops and all. And now I'm going to start with my French sorrel. Continue with the French sorrel. More French sorrel. First, I'm going to cut it into sections about oh, 10 inches long. And I'll put it all together and feed it in at once. I think it'll fit. I'll pry that out because there's a lot of fiber on it. Clean it and then switch from the number from the number J grid, J for juicing, because it has larger holes for greens, and I'm going to switch to the number two grid, which is better for carrots. Now when carrots are small like this, you can get two or 
Clean my grid once more to get all the greens fiber off. I can see all of it is off, just carrot fiber on here now. Now one thing I always do is feed some carrots in without the pusher. Because I want some pulp to come up and absorb this juice that accumulates down here. absorbs liquid very, very well. And we'll continue with carrots. Now even though you can see inside this front loading feed tube, often the carrots especially are not shred, so I'm going to put two fingers full of pulp in here and force any um, plugs of produce in there all the way through. Now I'm going to clean the feed tube, the grid and the grid holder, and then make some juice. I'm going to mix my carrot pulp with the greens pulp, but I want to point out, never leave the cutter on the machine. With the hole facing down so it has good drainage, place it in top of the feed pan. And as you notice I'm using the front angle feed pan that eliminates blowback. So I'm going to rotate the bowl as I mix the greens and carrots. And I'm going to continue mixing in both directions until I get a really, really good mix. Whenever there's carrots mixed with greens, it will not stick to your juicing cloth. I've taken my cloths out of the freezer, so I'm going to crack the ice on the edge of the counter and then separate the six cloths so that I can start folding pulp inside and make some juice. There's the last of my six cloths. Now I'm going to demonstrate the six cloth less work method. I'm pulling my folding container out and notice I leave a space here for the full cloths and this part is uh, uh, hanging down but not touching the counter. So three scoops into each cloth. You'll get an idea how much is in there, about a cup, cup and a half of produce. Nice tight package, the tighter the better. And I'm going to press two cloths full of pulp at one time. Flatten it. Pull it into a tight package, the tighter the better. And these first two cloths go into the press. Now this is very, very important. Centered left to right, centered front to back, adjusted if need be, all the way back, back it off, and continue filling cloths. Now when you're on your last cloth, advance that all the way. Pull this into a tight package. Here's my six cloth less work method. This goes forward, this goes over, the spent cloths go on top. And two more cloths in the press, center, left to right, center, front to back, all the way back, back it off a little bit. Now you do not throw away the pressed pulp. Most people who've not seen my videos throw this away. Don't do that. Put in two scoops on top of the old pulp, not three, two scoops. Nice tight package, the tighter the better. Flatten it, set it aside, 
continue. Again, do not throw away the spent pulp. When you're on your last cloth, advance that all the way. Two scoops. Now my container's very full, so when I'm on my last cloth, I'll advance that all the way. And because my container is full, I'm going to shut off my machine. Let's fold pulp into this last cloth. And after we fill our bottles, we'll make more juice. So again, this goes forward, that goes over, we'll put our spent claws on here. And now, I'm going to set this back, but never set it back just a little, you will forget. Set it back so it's very, very obvious, and let's put this into bottles. Normally I would fill this from the front, but so the camera gets a good angle, I'm going to fill it from the back. And I'm leaving 10% to add either filtered or distilled water, even bottled water would work. Probably could use tap water too, but I wouldn't. Now remember, we set our tray weight back, so center it on the press plate again. Put two cloths full of pulp in the press, and we continue as before. Centered left to right, centered front to back, adjust it if need be, all the way back, back it off. And again, do not throw away this pulp. Now this pad is getting very thick. So this time I'll put on two patties, but I think next time it's only going to be one patty. I'm going to form this spent pulp into a tight ball, not throw away the pulp, squeeze it again, and show you how I get 10% more juice. And the 10% you get in this last pressing has the most valuable nutrients. Not many people know that, but it's a fact. And we'll fold it under several times to minimize slippage. And we'll do that in both directions. Flatten that, set it aside. Let's advance that all the way. And we'll have to put this in bottles again. Now, as you can see, I have repackaged all the spent pulp into three double packets of spent pulp and I'm going to press it again just to demonstrate to you how much more juice we can get and I'm going to use a measuring beaker to measure how much more juice we get. We'll set the juice aside all the way back. Well first let's determine if it's in the center that's very very important. All the way back, back it off a little well, so far we have two ounces, and that's a significant amount. As long as you have a steady stream, you can leave it up. You can leave it up all day if you wanted to. But let's wait until we get droplets. And that's about now. Now, you have to be constantly aware, because you never know how that's going to overshoot in a small container like this. Now, while that set of two repackaged cloths is pressing. I'm going, well I'm going to, I've already repackaged all of these already pressed pulp because I'm going to repackage it and press it again. So far we've got 11 ounces. So we'll put in two more of the repackaged pulp and then center left to right, center front to back, all the way back, back it off. I'm going to repackage this again while this is pressing. Well, so far 16 ounces and we still have two packets to press. And again, as long as you have a steady stream, leave it up. This bottom base plate enables you to leave it up as long as you want. There we have droplets, so let's back it off. So far we've got 15 ounces. Now, we're not going to be able to press the last two without this overflowing, so I'm going to put it in the collection bowl, put in the last two cloths full of repackaged pulp,
So we had 16, 16 and a half ounces. Let's see how much more we get. There's another two ounces. Well, there's another five ounces of juice. So we've got about 22 more ounces. It's now to top off all of these bottles with distilled water. I have a water distiller. You could use filtered water or even bottled water. So we got 13 bottles full of juice. And now we're going to top it off again after we get that foam off there and cap it. Now before we do a taste test, I'm going to press the water out of these cloths. But first, almost everyone forgets to clean the upper plate. I don't know if you can see that or not, but not clean. So you wipe it with a paper towel around all sides. Then we're going to press out the water from these folded cloths. And after you press out the water into a plastic bag and into the freezer, they will go. Now, as you can see, we got 5, 10, 13 bottles of juice, plus enough for a taste test. And one and a half of these bottles, at least, came from pressing the already spent pulp by forming it into a tight package and pressing it on a whole health foundation premium juicer that has that solid bottom plate. So let's do a taste test. All right, my friends, here we have a juice with the gobo root and a little bit of celery added to my other greens and produce. Oh, this is very, very delicious. Well, this formula turned out to be a winner in terms of taste and also in terms of nutritional value because of that last 10% squeeze. Well, I hope you like what you've seen, and if you do, please tell a friend. If you'd like to phone me, my phone number is 760-753-0321. My email address is developtrust at cox.net, and my webpage is wholehealthfound.com. If you own a Norwalk juicer and you want to upgrade it, I do sell all the parts you need to upgrade it so that you have the best juicer on the planet. I'll see you in the next video.